Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Amazon Lumberyard. This is going to show you how to make a main menu that goes from a main menu level to a game level back to the main menu after you've completed the level and then you can quit as well. So a little bit of housekeeping at first. If you open up Projects Configurator, if you're using a custom project, that's fine. But I'm going to just use the Samples project because it's already set up and ready to go. So just make sure that that's checked if you want to follow along. So go ahead and quit out of that and open up the Lumberyard Editor. So the tutorial really is going to go three steps. Step number one is going to be the UI of the menu. Step number two is going to be the actual scripting that will make it function. And the third step is going to be actually putting it into the engine as opposed to the editor, because that's actually an important step. Now the reason I wanted to do this topic specifically is because I didn't see anything in the official documentation showing how to do this specifically switching between scenes and I thought that that was just something that was really useful because putting a main menu is something that I like to do early on when I'm making a game project because it just looks nice and oh, super professional as opposed to just starting up the level when you build and then it kind of just seems like a test so when you open up your editor and you get to this welcome screen the first thing you're going to do is open up camera sample assuming you're using the sample project and the reason we're opening camera sample is that this is the first level of the actual sample project game that it loads. So what better choice to make an actual main menu? So step number one, UI. So you're going to start off by going view, open view pane, all the way to the bottom is your UI editor. Open that up and you have a glorious blank canvas to work with. So the way the UI editor works is you have elements and components. Components are attached to elements, so without an element you can't do anything. So go to New, Empty Element, we're going to call this one Start, because this is going to be the one that says Press Enter to start. So you can place it if you want, I'm just going to leave it, Add Component, Text, change the text to Press Enter to Begin. Now if you look at the text, it's just white plain white. It's going to be really hard to see that. So you can just go change the color real quick. I'm going to make it like a light blue because that shows up pretty well. But it's still kind of hard to see, so I'm going to also give it a drop shadow font effect. That just makes it pop. Now there's another one we have to make, and there's two ways to do it. You can either create a new element and add the component manually again, or you can be efficient and go copy the start and paste. Call this quit. Now it doesn't look like anything's there, but it's just because it puts everything at the center by default. If you click the little I, you'll see that it's overlapping there. So we have to change the position of this. Everything starts at 0, 0, and going negative from then is up, and positive is down. So if we change the Y position to be something like 50, that's good and separated. All we have to do now is just change push enter to Q to quit. And look at that. Nice. So now just remember to save. Save canvas as. I'm going to call it main menu because it's the main menu. So save, quit. That's the UI down. Next step is number two, the actual scripting. So we're back here in the camera sample screen, which is awesome. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to this roll up bar, which is kind of like your headquarters for every object in the game of various types like your brushes are just like geometric art objects your designer tool is how you make basic shapes for now we're going to go to the entities folder which is kind of like physics and trigger type stuff so we're going to go to default flow graph entity now when you put a flow graph entity in the scene or any object in the scene it's not actually placed yet it's following the cursor once you click it it's now placed. So click off of it and click back and do create flow graph. And this is going to be the start of our scripting journey. If you have a group in mind that you want to put it in just for cleanliness, hierarchical reasons, that's cool. I'm just going to put it in the none category. Now the flow graph window here, the three main things you're going to be using are search, which is if you're looking for something specifically like I'm looking for input key and actually spell it correctly then you'll see it down there, right there. Your components, this is 
all of the everything of scripting in your game to make things work, including making helicopters, which is rad. So in our flow graph entity one graph down here, you can see the hierarchy of our scripts because you can have flowchart scripts on any object you want, or they can just sort of be floating in the level. I like to put them attached to an entity just so you know it's that entity script. So the flow graph entity is blank, which is awesome. We're going to start this off because we want the main menu to display at the start of the game. We're going to go to the aptly named game start node, which fires off when the game starts, either in-game or in the editor, and it has one output which can go to multiple things. And the output we want is in the UI canvas load. We're loading a canvas because we're going to load the canvas we just created. So double click canvas path name and go to the folder and select main menu canvas. Now, if you close flow graph and push control G, you can see that our main menu appears in the center of the screen, which is awesome. So push escape to exit that. Go back into your flow graph by going to view, view pane, flow graph. So that's pretty awesome, but it doesn't actually do anything yet other than displaying that text. So the first thing we want to do is input, right? In this case, we're going to do debug input. We're going to do input key and input key. This input key is going to be the enter button. Unfortunately, you can't push enter here. You actually have to type enter. So enter needs to be caps. And then the other one is going to be Q, just like I normally say. So this input key enter is going to enter the new level. So mission load next level. The logic being that in a game completing the mission is like you know, if you've completed the level it's going to load. In this case your mission is push the enter key to activate next level which we're going to call game level. Now game level doesn't actually exist yet but this is just a text string so it's not like it's looking for something that doesn't exist so it's cool. Now this here, the debug input key, isn't going to load a new level, it's going to quit the application, so we're going to look for execute string, which is in the debug menu. Pressed to set, and the string is going to be quit. And I'll explain that le later, but basically this is going to type quit into the console, which is going to cause your application to quit. So this flow graph is complete in this level, so go ahead. you don't have to save this, you just have to X out of it. Your flow graph entity. This is all we're doing in this scene, believe it or not. So go up here to save, and for later's sake, do export to engine or else it's not actually going to be in the game. It's just going to be in the editor. So when it says level was successfully exported, click OK. And now we're going to go to a new scene, which is going to be called game level. Now it, it does a weird thing and it like minimizes your game. That's fine. Just leave it. Choose the defaults. Go like this. And then you have a glorious empty scene. Congratulations. The first thing we do is here is put in a character, but we don't actually have one loaded yet, so we're going to go to View Open Pane Database View. This is where you get what are called prefabs, which are just things that are already made for you. It comes with a nice controller, so we're going to go to this button here, which is the Open Library, Character Controller.xml. Push OK. It's now loaded in the thing, as you can see. But if you quit out of this and go back, and you're thinking like, oh, I don't have it anymore, so you go to prefabs and you go back and you're like, I need to reload it. You'll get an error because it's actually already loaded. So you don't have to do it more than once. It's in here in the roll-up bar, objects, prefab, before that. So the sphere controller is just a nice third-person controller just for ease sake. So just place that somewhere in the scene. You push control G. You have a cool little robot buddy that moves around and you can do it. But this level really doesn't have anything in it, so we're going to add a little something something by going to the prefab, excuse me, the roll-up bar objects entity. This time instead of entity defaults, we're going to proximity trigger, which is just like an area trigger, so uncheck it. Right click it, create flow graph. Again, I'm just not gonna group it because it's not really a big deal right now. Now in this one we need it to be the proximity trigger specifically that you activate. So get your proximity trigger, make sure that's selected, and go right click in this empty bit and do add selected thing. Now this is a node that 
gets triggered when one of these conditions happen to that specific proximity tree. In this case, we want the enter key. So the enter key is going to go back to the main menu by going to mission, load next level, enter, activate next level equals camera underscore sample. If you're using a custom project, that's going to just be whatever you want in the starting of the people. And that is literally all we have to do. So one thing I like to do is that it's hard to see that trigger. Like it's invisible in the game. So I'm going to go to brush, objects, style, town, architecture, props, balloon. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to put a balloon because who doesn't love balloons, right? So now that's placed, you know where the trigger is. So if you push Control G and play the game and you're like, let's test these menus out and you go on the trigger and nothing happened. Which you can see if you look at the very bottom of the screen, you have a console that says function end level not found in the table. Suppressing loading of next level camera sample. That's because this is in the editor right now and the load level function only works in the actual build of the game. So this is going to lead straight into step three, putting everything into the actual engine. So save the scene that we just made and do export to engine. If you forgot to do this in the previous camera sample level, make sure you do that because they both have to be exported. And now go open up your Windows Explorer and you have to find where this sample project launcher is. If you put Amazon Lumberyard where it wanted to be when you installed it, it would be under your C drive, Amazon, Lumberyard, version number, dev, bin64. At the very, pretty much very bottom is your sample project launcher. Double click that. You'll get a cool beaver with a saw, which is super rad. And if you look closely, you'll see other beavers doing various construction jobs. I like the one over here that drives a crane, because that's rad. That one has a hammer. All right, so you can see this is the actual game itself running as opposed to just being in the editor. You can see the menu is in there, so if you push enter, it's going to load up your game scene, which is going to look really bad because there's no lights, but if you enter that trigger, which you know where it is because of the balloon, it goes back to the main menu. Congratulations, you beat the game. Now the other thing we did is push Q to quit, and the reason we did that is because if you push a logical key, you might think like the exit key or something. It doesn't actually quit the game because there's no default thing to quit yet. The way to quit, if you don't have any of that, is to go to the console and type quit like that, which is what we did with that execute string we coming in. So push Q terminates the application as if you had selected quit from the menu. So there we have a fully completed level main menu. So Thank you for watching, and I hope that was useful.